Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the 5 minute library. Today we're on air with Vish Thamija who is often quoted as India's master of crime and courtroom drama and he is responsible for stimulating the legal fiction genre in India. Vish Thamija is a London based author of night of 10 crime fiction novels and the 11th one is coming out in June. Out of these five have been picked up for adaptation to the screen. I think that's pretty cool. Um he's responsible for simulating the legal fiction genre in India and he's the only author of Indian origin who's listed among the major legal thriller writers of the world. We're really excited to have you here Vish and today we're going to be discussing your book Prisoner's Dilemma. Over to you Vish, we're so happy to have you here. Oh, it's it's a privilege to be here. It's an honor to be with you Ira and Piyushi and really thank you so much for uh seeking out and and, and connecting. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being here. We should such an honor to have you on our show because you write such an incredibly rare genre. And speaking of your background, I know that you come from a slightly corporate background. So tell us more about how you got the writing bug and how you decided to venture into the legal thriller or uh, legal fiction aspect of writing. Okay. So it's not slightly corporate. It was totally corporate from the 90s till uh the 2018 when I uh hang by hat uh the writing bug i mean i always wanted to write a story it was you know one of those things that you put on your bucket list so when i wrote nothing lasts forever i and i used to tell my wife i want to write one day and one day she said then write stop talking about it and start writing so i wrote about 5 6 chapters of my first book nothing lasts forever showed it to her and the first thing she said where have you copied this from So I guess you you would take it as negative, but I took it as positive that if she thinks I have copied it, it must be good enough for me to copy, right? Why would I copy some trash? So that gave me the impetus to kind of go on and write the story, and that got published in two thousand and ten. I had no plans, honest to God, to write anything else. I thought one book, job done, move on, do something else, but. it hasn't stopped selling 12 years later it's it, i think it's in its 30th or 31st edition every year the reprint comes out and it gets sold that gives you the incentive the motivation to kind of carry on so uh i carried on writing along with my corporate career for quite some time until the time i decided that this was enough and i will go and write and that's how i got into it legal thrillers okay i wanted to be a lawyer so everyone used to ask me what are you doing law but what will you do i wanted to be a lawyer and then you know i i i did an mba and kind of jumped ship went into corporate life but that legal bug kept kind of you know eating me away that i needed to do something about it so i had a interest in legal i have friends who uh, kind of continued and finished their uh, law degree and therefore i have friends i can call up and ask for legalities and i think it's a very good genre uh, that plays out well That's great, and it's always great to be. I feel like your interests have made you a pioneer in the field, which is great. So you know, let's get down to specifics. Let's focus about this book. So the prisoner's dilemma is based on the classic example studied in economics and game theory of the prisoner's dilemma. But I want to know what inspired you to write a book or a story about it. The police in questioning. I think even in households, this policy has been. in existence even before the uh, the term was coined this is how parents kind of have two children in the opposite room to ask have you done this or have you done this i just took it one step forward as as i wrote in the introduction is if you have to catch someone out you got to make two people unless they've really practiced it like a like a theater and you know they have their lines one of them will end up contradicting the other so it's 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 very common that if i take two of you if you haven't discussed something you lie in front of me i take you in one room and the other one and ask you the same questions you might not have the exact answers unless you prepared so it's it's kind of and and most people when they do such stuff they don't actually prepare to be questioned that's where you get caught out so that's 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 it's a it's something that's been followed through ages so i just kind of thought there is a potential of a story which could i could turn into a bit of a psychological you know uh, bent to it and i instead of coming up with a title and then explaining it's about prisoner's dilemma i said let's go up front and say it is prisoner's dilemma 
So tell us more about what your writing process was like and what inspired you to create these certain twists at that certain point in the story. Another thing I forgot to mention that works for uh, psychological thrillers is a split time narrative. So past, present, past, present, past, present, which keeps the reader at the tenter roots because you will end it exactly where the reader wants what's happening next, but you take him into the past. And then when the past is getting too, too, too heated up, you bring them into the present so that that interest continues. See, how I write is I generally have a full idea of the story before I sit down to write. So I, I know what the beginning is. I know what the crime would be, you know, whether it's murder, rape, uh, burglary, or, or, or anything else, abduction, kidnapping. I know how it will get solved and how it will relate to the reader. Because at the end of the day, you could write every story in a page. You don't need to go around the whole 400 pages of taking them into it. I've always, in my case, and I'm sure it happens to other authors, I'm not unique. When you, if you plan the characters well, so long after you forget the story, the characters have remained in your head. Alfie will remain in your head for a long time to come if you've read the book. And once the characters are fully formed, the characters lead the story. So you know that for Arfi, he needs to be making up a story at this point. At this point, he will make a story, take a U-turn, go out of the room, come back. So the twists and the red herrings, and as, as, a, as, as any author would tell you, you have to plant clues into the story. So there are ample clues in Prisoner's Dilemma as well, where you can make out what's happening, but you're not sure. Because I, I can't give it away. You know? So yeah, the twists and the red herrings and the side stories happen as you write. So I don't plan the side stories and the, you know, the asides uh, uh, when I begin writing. But I, as the character develops, you know what the character can do. So once you know a person, you know what the person is capable of. So your characters are kind of those people. They become friends by the end of the book. And you know how they'll behave. They need to crack a joke here. They have to come up with a joke or they have to come up with a punchline, or they have to come do something stupid just for the sake of it. So I think that's how the uh, side stories for all uh, authors uh, kind of, kind of they, they come out uh, without you realizing them. I really like that. I really like your characters becoming your friends by the yeah. end of the book, because then it's no more you thinking, okay, what would this character do? But it's more like the character speaking to you and saying yeah. that, you know, if this was a person, this is how yeah. they behave. So I think that this is, sorry, this is what happened with when I finished writing Bhendi Bazaar. I actually fell in love with the character. The villain in the book was so strong, the villain could have carried away the story. So you needed an equally strong character to kind of take the story from a protagonist point of view. You know, sometimes the villain can be all powerful. So you anti-hero or whatever you might call it, that the story will shift entirely towards them unless you have a balancing act. So Amitabh Bachchan Ji ke saath, Danny Dinzokpa ya Amrish Puri were a better villains. Then, you know, you pick up anyone and put him against him. The villain will totally collapse. Or the other way around. If you had Amrish Puri as the villain, you needed a substantial hero to carry the movie. Or Amrish Puri would take the movie away from them. This is what I was trying to say. I, I think like the Joker, you know, the Joker was supposed to just be an anti-hero character, but then people loved him so much, they wanted more movies on him and less on Batman. <laughs> so I agree, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and I think you've covered like a lot of really great, like not even just your own writing process, but writing mm -hmm. concepts and ways to sort of hold the intrigue of the reader, make them feel like they can figure it out, but they can never really figure it out <laughs> till the end. Unless you, yeah, it could change last minute. There, there could be a twist. Exactly. Mm. So tell us what's next uh, on your plan, what's coming for your readers, and what, what are you most excited about? So my next book is Cold Justice. So uh, it's the same legal team uh, that worked in uh, Unlawful Justice. However, the, the, I think the uh, broad outline is that this time, the judge is not presiding in the case. The judge is on trial. So the judge is accused of murder and the same team uh, goes to defend her and the tables get turned. We're really looking forward to that. And um, considering that you are the first and the biggest legal uh, fiction writer from um, an Indian origin, 
I think it'll be I think it'll be a hit. I'm sure. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know today, uh, Vish also sent a picture through as um, his novel being in um, the fifth on the fifth uh, slot in um, the fiction category at bookstores. So that's in W. Smith. I think that's W. Smith in Delhi. I G I F. Somebody was traveling sent it to me. So for all our listeners, if you haven't read any uh, any thrillers yet, or if you want to start with the fiction genre, make sure you start with this book and then proceed to go through all of Vish's books. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for being on our show with us today, Vish. Is there any, having you. Of course. Is there any message you would like to give our readers before we conclude the show? Uh, read my books. <laughs> 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 three, three, three word message. Read my books. That's it. All the best and thank you so much, ladies. Thank, thank you. you. And yes, all bye. the listeners, we will see you in five. <laughs>